All right, so boys and girls, as I said originally, we are SciTech Discovery Center. We are a science museum in Frisco, Texas. We want to bring hands-on science to everyone out there, especially right now when you can't visit us. So um, we are going to be talking today a little bit about birds. And the first question we had in our chat, and we have a chat feature at the bottom of the webinar, um, if you'd like to answer our questions, or if you have anything you'd like to ask Ms. Marquita. The first question we have is, what are our favorite birds? I've got mine up here, which is the hummingbird, and we have heard some people, their favorites were owls, or some of the other favorites that we had in the chat. Um, I saw hawks and falcons, and then I put down my favorite right now that I think of is the nighthawk. The nighthawk, I like that. And don't forget, penguins are birds too, so you can still like <laughs> or yes. All right, so today we are talking about owls, and we have a variety of owls around the DFW, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is where our museum is from. So we have great horned owl, barred and barn owl, long-eared, short-eared, burrowing, and eastern screech owl. And all these owls have different sounds. Um, I want to share with you guys a website. Um, it's, uh, let me stop sharing this screen and share with you a really great website through the Cornell Lab. Uh, they have a site called eBird, eBird.org. And you can find all sorts of information on there. You can find out where they're from, what they look like. As you can see, the long-eared owl has big tufts on top of its head, as opposed to a short-eared owl, which doesn't have any. You can also scroll down and you can hear the sounds that these owls make. These are recordings that scientists and citizens like yourself have made out in the back. LNS catalog number. Four nine zero five seven. Hmm. You got that nice typical hoot <laughs> for a long-eared owl. Hmm. Screech owl has, as you would think, a screech sound to it. Um, now we have the barred owl. It has that name because of the white stripes on its feathers make it look like bars across it. And the barred owl has a completely different sound. And I'm, I'm playing these two because I'm going to quiz you in a second. There's been a mysterious owl in my yard, so we have to identify it. Here's a barred owl. Now, a lot of times people will call that call, uh, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? So see if you can hear that sentence in there. I'm not entirely sure I heard the words, who cooks for you, who cooks for you, but a lot of people claim that they've heard that. We have the barn owl. Uh, you can tell that one has that nice disc-shaped nice disc face that allows the sound to get captured almost like a satellite dish and go around to the sides for its ears. And the barn owl is often found in a barn. <laughs> Take a guess as to what you think that, uh, that who LNS catalog number 50147. Definitely not what you would think of from that. It's so loud when they scream in your face. So that would be a barn owl. And lastly, we have a great horned owl who is who can be found all over the United States if you check them out, even down in South America. Uh, the great horned owl also has tufts on its head. You can tell he's got really great uh, nocturnal nighttime eyesight with those large eyes capturing a lot of light. Um, they do not turn their head all the way around 360 degrees. They turn their necks about 270 degrees, so almost entirely all the way around. Their blood vessels are specialized so that it doesn't cut off the blood flow to their neck. But with all the feathers you can see on their head, it does almost look like they've spun it around completely. And let's get the call for the great horned owl. It almost sounds like a stutter, like they're trying to get the first hoot out, like a hoot hoot. Stutters just a little bit. Now let me replay that for you guys. So just a reminder, that was the great horned owl, our a uh, screech owl was the screech. Our barn owl also had a bit of a screech, and our barred owl had the who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? Now I'm going to play for you guys um, the sound that I've captured in my backyard. Um, I need your help to figure out 
which owl you think it is. So let me let me right back to our presentation. All right. So we've heard the sounds from a couple of different owls. Now we're going to see if we can figure out, we've gone to uh, our eBird website, we've listened to all of the different sounds. You can check it out by bird or even just region if you've heard a noise and you wanna see who it could be in your region. We've heard the great horned owl, the barn owl, the bard, the long eared. We've also earlier, we've heard the burrowing, the Eastern screech. So who is in my backyard? I'm gonna play that sound for you and then guess in the chat room who you think it is that's been in my backyard. And it sounds almost like two of them calling back and forth to each other. Can you hold it closer? It hasn't started playing yet, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it. That is very low. All right, let me try that again. See if we can hear. Did you guys hear that? That's better. All right, any guesses as who you think that was who's been in the backyard? It was a hoot, 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 hoot. A hoot, 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 hoot. All right, type in your guesses as who you think it is. So one person guessed the great horned owl, but let's see if anybody else has a guess. All right, so it's definitely not the screech owl with that screeching sound. Great horned not, owl. Not the barn owl. Is that Great all? horned owl. All right, we've got a lot of guests for great horned owl. All right, we're, guessing the, we're not getting anyone to guess the who cooks for you. All right, so I, I did a little research and it turns out- <laughs> Catherine it said big owl. The, it, a big owl, yes, it is the great horned owl, who is a big owl. That is the one that's been in my backyard. All right, so um, we, I, I did want to attract that animal here, so I wanted to build a nest for him. Um, I went to another section, Nest Watch is also part of the Cornell Lab, and if you go on this website, you can look up a specific owl, you can find out how to attract it, how to construct whatever you would like, whether it's a nest box, a nest cone, you can download those plans. You can even find out if that species is in decline in your area. So it looks like the great horned owl is doing just fine in most of the United States, but their numbers are dropping um, up in this red region. So if you live there, this would be a great project for you guys. Then you can check out how high you need to put the box, how far away from other trees, what time, what type of year is the best time of year to do this when they're actually looking for a nest. And then you can start, you can get all sorts of tips on construction, but I'm gonna show you what I did. So the, for a great horned owl, they just want a cone and it's really easy to build. You get a piece of metal mesh, you get a piece of fabric, you fold them into a cone and then you put it in a tree. And you can put some branches in there ahead of time, let them do it themselves. But I'm gonna walk you over so you can see. Let me bring my, my phone. If you guys can see right here, boom, waving with my hand. If you wanna make this one the main view for your screen right here. So in order to do that, you'll just hover over her, her screen that you want to look at and then there's a blue box with three little dots and if you click on that you can say pin video and it'll make it your full screen on your um, device. All right so the first thing I got here was I got a nice piece of metal mesh and the dimensions they told me were 36 inches by 36 inches so we cut it out. We also did the same thing for a piece of landscaping fabric 36 inches by 36 inches and for both of them, we cut this slit right here because that's going to help us make a cone shape. And I'll show you how you do that. So if you have, this is a metal mesh, or if this is actually your fabric, and you cut a slit in the middle, this is a great way you just lift it up, fold it over, and now you have an instant cone. 
So this is what we did with our metal mesh. We folded it up, we made a cone, and we had to use a pair of strong wire cutters and pliers and some good garden gloves. But we've made this cone here. And then we've added, we've gotten this piece of fabric, do the same thing, wrap it around, make a nice cone shape, and put it inside, put it inside the cone. So this really only took us a couple of minutes once we figured out what we had to do. We put the, have to make the fabric into a cone, put it in there. And then you want to secure this into the tree. So if you go back to my original view, you'll be able to see. I'm going to hit a couple of pictures for you guys, and you'll see what we, we ended up with when we installed it. All right. So we have, we picked a really nice tall tree. We picked one that has a nice crook in it or a nice area that was kind of where the branches come together. We attached it and we actually use these little metal brackets in the largest picture, you might see some silver bits. We have metal brackets that attach it to the, the tree just to make sure if there's a strong wind, it doesn't come down. And again, it, it didn't take us very long once we had all the materials, the metal mesh was left over from a previous project, the landscaping fabric. We just grabbed that at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or a place like that. So we put it in there. We added some branches, some small ones, just to start it off. And we're going to let the birds continue on. And hopefully, we'll have someone joining us. But if you do end up having them join you, you may start to notice some things in the ground. On the ground, I should say. So these are called owl pellets. You'll find them around an area where an owl lives. And the question I have for you is, what is this? So a lot of times people will guess that this is poop. Poop, it's perfectly fine to talk about it like that. If you want to use a scientific phrase, it is scat, animal scat is animal droppings. So when we're talking about scat or poop, we're talking about something that has gone all the way through the digestive system and anything left that the, that the intestines and the stomach couldn't digest came out the other end. We could also, consider it maybe a hairball. That would be different. That would be something that they started to swallow and their body found there are bits and pieces that should not go through the rest of, should not go through the stomach and the intestines. So that comes back up. So are they hairballs? Things the body didn't want to send in the digestive tract. All right, take a guess, you guys. What do you think it is? Do you think it's poop or do you think it's a hairball? And after we dissect them and look inside, then we're gonna decide together. The other thing we wanna think about is um, what are they eating? Take a look at that picture. I'm not going to tell you what's in there. What do you think it is? Do you think that this animal is an herbivore and they're only eating plants, vegetables, and seeds and berries? Do you think that the owl is a carnivore and they're only eating meat? Or do you think that it's an omnivore and it's eating both meats and plants? So we have some, we had someone say none to the poop and hairball. And then we had somebody say bones. All right, so someone guesses that they see some bones in there. So if it's bones, is that animal an herbivore, carnivore, or possibly an omnivore? Somebody said hairball, carnivore. All right, well, I'm gonna get started now. I don't normally find owl pellets outside. Um, what I do is, if you wanna see my other video, you can pin this one, or you can take a look. We find owl pellets on online sources. So you can get them on Amazon. There are some other companies you can order them from, Carolina Biological. Um, Amazon is honestly the, the easiest for us. They'll come in different sizes, small, medium, and large. So I have medium sized here, and they come pre-packaged um, pre for you. They are sanitary, so it is fine for you to touch with bare hands, or if you would like, you can use gloves. I know people are trying not to use a lot of their gloves, but you can do gloves if you want to. I'm going to go with bare hands today. Some of the, um, the purchases when you make online, they might come with a kit with very special tools you can see in there. Those tools can also be found in your home. It might be a set of tweezers. You might have some kind of, looks like I had a dental pick in the junk drawer, no, no idea why. Pop <laughs> pick, toothpick. Uh, this is for cuticles, to push back your cuticles. And I had a little flathead screwdriver. So, the basic thing is you want something small and pokey because it's going to poke open all the bits inside there or you can just use your fingers. It's totally fine. So you can use any of those bits of equipment and we are going to take a look and see what we can find inside. I've also provided a bone chart 
Now, you can find these bone charts in the, the kit when you buy them off of Amazon. You can find them online. You can uh, download them in a couple of different places. You can get them at Carolina Biological. You can get them um, Houston Audubon or just when you purchase them. So we're going to put up a couple of different charts here. I've split it into two to make it easier. And then I'm going to start dissecting. And I'm going to, I'm going to pull things out, hold it up to the camera, and you have to tell us what they found. So this first chart shows that there are four basic kinds of animals we're going to assume might be in here. Uh, a rodent, which could be a rat or a mouse, a shrew, a mole, or a bird. Those are the different types of bones we expect we could find here in our owl pellet. Now there can be different parts of the body. The hind limb is the back limb. We've got uh, pelvic bone, that's the hip bone. Maybe it's a rib cage, which would be very small. The pictures on this chart are not to scale, obviously. Vertebrae are even smaller than the rib. The vertebrae are the backbone, tiny little backbones. You could have the skull. If you check out the page I have up now, you could have the skull, which has the top half of the teeth. So your top teeth, all of the head. Um, if it's a bird, it's going to be more of a beak. You could have the bottom jaw with the bottom teeth. The scapula, that's a word you may not have come across before. The scapula is actually your shoulder blade. So if you're sitting next to someone in your family right now, pat them on the back and you might feel those bumps right behind where their arms connect to their body. Those, that scapula could be sticking out. That's your shoulder blade. We've also got the forelimb or the front leg. So I'm going to start peeling it open. And right off the bat, I start to see some things in there. You can wet the material with a little bit of water, which makes it easier to peel the feathers off, but then you leave with a, a bit of a furry feathery mess. So I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm going to roll back and forth, just roll the material to separate what I'm noticing are two basic things in here and jump in the chat room with anything else that you notice. But I'm noticing a lot of furry stuff and a lot of hard stuff, some bones. I'm going to pick a couple of out, a couple of them out, and then let's see if we can identify what those bones might be. All right. There's a fantastic looking bone. It's, oh my goodness, it looks almost like something from a skeleton costume in Halloween. So does anyone have a guess is which bone, which part of the body that could be? We have those two different ones. We've got the two charts here. We'll go back and forth. It might even be part of one of those whole sections. Maybe it came off. Maybe it was originally attached to something else. Does anyone have any guess as to what this bone could be? Type it in there. I'm definitely not a skull. I'm thinking it's either the forelimb, the front limb, or the back limb, the hind limb. I'm starting to think it might be the forelimb of one of our animals. Maybe the mole has very strange forelimbs, so not him. It could be bird or maybe rodents. So Ms. There was somebody said that they saw bones and feathers and somebody else said leg. All right, so I think we've definitely got a leg bone. Oh, this is an unusual one. Somebody said ribs. Ribs, all right, well, let's see what we've got here. This one, it looks almost like it's like the end of a sewing needle. It's got an opening on there, like the end of a sewing needle. Let's see, does anyone have, want to match that to one of the bones on one of our charts? We have a guess of a pelvic bone, maybe with that opening, with that circle. Let's look at the pelvic bones. Which animal pelvic bone do you think it could be? A nice big opening. Hmm. Somebody said shrew. Shrew, yep, yeah, could be shrew. I think it could be between a shrew or a mole. It's a very long, skinny opening. Okay. So we could say shrew or mole, so we'll put that here. Uh, we do have this one that looks, looks almost like the swoosh from the Nike symbol. Swoosh? The swoosh from the Nike symbol. See, it looks almost like I, toenail clippings, like a crescent shape. Oh. So let's take a look at our bone chart. Do we have anything that could be that crescent shape? Somebody said a mole rib. A 
a molar rib. Oh yeah, look at those pictures. That looks just like a molar rib. All right, so we've had mm. a guess of a mole pelvic bone and a mole rib. Okay. All right, it sounds like we're, we're zoning in on an animal that was eaten. All right. Somebody said, or a wing. Oh, so maybe that's the wings? shoulder, the scapula. That's possible. Now I'm noticing something in here. Let's see if I can get it under the camera. It looks like two teeth. Oh, so that knocks out bird. Birds don't have teeth. All right, and this feels really hard. I think this whole thing, this whole clump in my hand is actually all one thing. I think this might be a skull. So let me start peeling away, gently peeling it away. I can use some of my tools. Use my roommate's tweezers. <laughs> Does your roommate know that you're using his tweezers? No, no. But that, well, that wasn't right. I should make sure that everyone knows what tools I'm using. That's right. Ask permission first. All right. So I'm starting to peel away some of this extra fluff. Whoops. And I'm still, and look at this. I've got this hard, shiny top bit. I think this is the top of someone's skull. All right. So let's see if I can clear off more of it. So let's take a look at our skulls and see what we've got here. We've got rodent skull, shrew skull, mole skull, and bird skull. All right, so we've got teeth, which means it's probably not a bird. And it looks like, let's try to get right under the camera. All right, it looks like I've got some top teeth and some bottom teeth. Let me uh, open the mouth, close the mouth, open the mouth, close the mouth. So let's take a look at those teeth. These teeth hang really far over, like an overbite. Which skull could we have that has that overbite where the teeth hang really far over and it has two sharp, two teeth that come up. Oh my goodness, they're very large. Let me pull up. Oh, I've pulled the entire jawbone off. I've got the whole bottom jawbone. Who does that match for the bottom jaw? We've got some teeth that look Somebody like said rodent. I don't think so. Look at that bottom tooth. This one comes up really far. If that matches, that looks like a rodent bottom jaw. This skull was intact until I got my until I got my fingers in there. Let's see if I can peel the other jaw came off. One was from the left side of the face, one was from the right side of the face. Not all animals have jaws that come off like that, but now I've got the other jaw out here. Mm. Does that look the same? They they peeled off of the same skull, so I'm confident in saying those came from the same animal. I'm gonna put them here us to keep track of. And then I've got the top of the skull. Let's see if I can clear that off a bit more with more of this fur. I see an opening that could be where the eye socket was. Get my fingers out of here so we can see, maybe pick at it. Oh, oh that was a good tool that picked it nicely. I don't see any other skulls in my owl palette, so it looks like this may be the only animal that was being eaten that mm. day, that time. All this fluff out. All right, let's take a look at that skull. Look at that overbite. What do we think that matches for a skull? Mm. What kind of guesses do we have? Let me Keep picking away at some of the extra feathers in the fur. Is up in the nasal, the nose cavity up here. Here's the teeth, front top teeth. Here's the nose. The eye cavity was up here. What do we have? What do we think? We've got the top of the skull, the bottom of the skull. We've got a bit of the rib cage. We've got possibly a shoulder or leg bone, possibly a hip bone. Let's see what else is in here. I've got a lot of these skinny. Bones. Look at all these skinny bones. I've got more of those little crescent shaped bones, lots of crescent shaped mm. bones. If you think about it, one animal is going to have a lot of ribs. Peel up, and then I have another bone with a hole in it. Oh. All right. I think this one might be our scapula, our shoulder bone, or a hip bone. Vote in the, in the chat. What do you think it is? Do we have hip bone? Do we have a shoulder bone? 
we have a pelvic bone or do we have a scapula? I'm thinking that they looks said like they said hip bone. Scapulas don't have holes in them. Okay, so we've got a pelvic bone. And which pelvic bone does that look like? Hold it differently so you can see. Pelvic bone. Which one does that look like? Hmm. Definitely not a bird. What do we think? It doesn't look like the rodent. It looks more like a shrew or a mole. What are our guesses in the chat box, Miss Marquita? Shrew or mole? Let's see. Hopefully not bird. We're still saying shrew. Okay. I'll put that in our file. So let's review. We found a lot of rib bones, and the rib bones can look very similar. Ours were mostly sh a swoop or swoosh, like the mole. We found some that looks like the hip bone from a shrew. We have not found any tiny little backbones. They might be too tiny for us to see. Oh, I've got another. Got another one. Let me poke everything out with the pokey stick. I've got another one that looks identical to the last one. So whatever animal this was had two hip bones. It had two <laughs> legs. All right. Thank goodness. Our animal had two back legs. I'm glad we figured that out. That is important. What else do we have? This is a very strange bone. It's, it's big and flat and it's got three sides almost. Hmm. Do we see anything on our charts that can match this? I think it almost looks, I don't know, maybe like a bird pelvic bone or maybe a strange scapula. I mean, it's a really, wide, flat thing. What about our scapulas? Look at the, uh, the scapulas, the shoulder bones. Could be a scapula. I'm thinking of our shoulder bones, it doesn't look like the bird. It doesn't look like the mole. Do we have any guesses for between rodent and shrew? What do you guys think in the chat? Somebody thinks that the owl that ate it was a burrowing owl. It was a bird now. All right, because these animals like to burrow. So which, uh, which animal did this shoulder blade come from? Which scapula is this from our chart? Maybe a rodent. I think so. I think that Miss Marquis is keeping track. She's keeping track of these so we can look at our results. Uh, scientists always ask other scientists what they think. You don't, you don't do science completely by yourself. You're going to have other scientists check your work. So as I pulled them out, we've all checked our work together. Let me get my I've recorded all of our guesses for what parts and what animals it came from. All right, let me get a little bit closer so we can see. So we have had uh, some type of skull. This was the top of the skull. And then we had the two bottom jaw pieces of our skull. We have had two pieces that looked the same that we said were probably leg bones from an animal. We've had some really big, wide, shoulder or scapula. We've had something that looks like maybe a hip bone of a different animal. So two different hip bones, maybe two different animals here. And then we've had a lot of these arm and leg bones. And we've also found a lot of these swooping rib cages. We have a few minutes left. Okay. All right. We so want to look at more, our results. More rib cages, lots and lots of rib cages. And then we've also, what's the other thing in here that's not bone? What's this other stuff? What do you guys think that extra stuff is? It's fluffy. It breaks apart in my fingers. It's mostly gray. So what do we think that other stuff is? Let's see if anybody has a guess. Hold on. All right, and I'll leave this so my phone is floating over this lovely bony something fluffy mess. Somebody said maybe dirt? Maybe dirt. Okay. I will say it does not feel like dirt. It is very fluffy and as I breathe, it floats around a lot more than dirt would. Somebody said fur, question mark. Okay, so fur, all right. So we have uh, taken a look at what was inside just one of the owl pellets. And again, my pack came with a lot of owl pellets. Um, the size of the pellet does not necessarily mean the size of the owl. It could just be the size of the meal they ate. So it would, be, it would be hard for me to know which owl this came from. I would have to ask the source that sent it to me where they got it. And a lot of these come from people who keep owls. Maybe they rehabilitate them or maybe they're zookeepers. 
All right, so let's take a look at what we found. Owl pellets. The first question we asked you was, is it poop or is it a hairball? All right, 10 seconds, everybody vote. Is this poop, something that went all the way through the digestive tract and came out the other end, and this is what the stomach and intestines did not digest? Or is this more of a hairball, something that they, the body did not want to go through the intestines because maybe it would be too pokey and rip it open? All right. Yes. We only have one vote so far, and they said none. None? You don't think it's poop or a hairball? All right. So scientists uh, Somebody did say hairball, after all. All right. We've got a hairball guess. I would say that I do not think this has gone all the way through the digestive system, especially the fact that it's dry. We don't have stomach acids. We don't have a lot of moisture. The other stuff that comes out of the bird is the stuff that it drinks, which would be water. So it's dry. We're going to go with it's a hairball. An owl pellet is something that they, they cough it up. They look very silly when they do it. They look like they're choking or dying. It's kind of like a ooh, ooh, ooh. And they do that over and over again. They're Gross. okay. They're just coughing up their hairball, their owl pellet. You may even have some cats do it. It's very similar. All right. So judging from this was what we found in their last meal before they wrapped this up and sent it to us. Do we think that they are an herbivore who eats only plants, a carnivore who eats only animals, or an omnivore who eats both? Now, we did not see any signs of leaves or seeds in there. What do we think? 10 seconds. Is an owl an herbivore or an omnivore? Start rattling the Carnivore. Got carnivore is a guess. Omnivore. All right. Now omnivore. All right. Got some guesses. The animal could have eaten some plants and maybe we didn't see it, but scientists have studied lots and lots of hairballs of owl pellets, and they have determined that they are in fact carnivores. And Miss Marquita can attest to that because she used to work somewhere where she took care of the owls. Did you ever feed an owl fruits and vegetables? No. Yeah, they are carnivores. All right. All right, so you're gonna have to close it out and reopen it after I've put all the little stars up. All right, so Miss Marquita has been keeping track of what we found in there. So I'm going to All right, well, actually, Ms. Marquita, do you want to open it up and share it? Yes, I can open it up. All right, so she's been can keeping track of all of the votes that we've had, of what we think we had in there, what bones, what types, what animals, and what part of the body. And we're going to take a look at scientists, and we want to look at your results. You have to keep track of your results all the time and see what you think you've got. Bear with me, friends. I was using two different laptops at the same time. That's so. right. I think I might be able to open it. All right, so let me share the screen again. Oh, did you do it? Okay. All right, so Ms. Marquita has put green stars on all of the types of bones we think we have found. So we think we found the back legs of rodents and shrews, the pelvic or the hip bones of rodents, shrew, and a mole. I definitely agree with the mole. That one looks really mole like. And the ribs of possibly a rodent or a mole. I'm gonna say that it looked more like a mole, but that was just my opinion. All right, we also have the next chart to where we looked at some of the other bones, and we found, we found a scapula of a root, that is for sure, and we found the skull of a root. That could be a mouse or a rat. So what do we have here? What has this owl been eating? We've definitely found some bones for a, a rodent. We found some that we think could be part of a shrew or part of a mole. So do you guys think, say yes, do you think that this owl ate one thing or more than one thing? I will say we only found one skull in there. Miss hmm. Marquita, would an owl spit up more than one owl pellet for a meal or just one owl pellet for a meal? Um, it depends on the size of the owl, All right, uh, so but typically um, it has to cough up the pellet before it can eat any more food. Oh, okay. So it's possible that it ate more than one animal and it just coughed up a couple of pellets. Yeah. All right. I, I feel confident with the, the, the um, I don't a lot of people are saying more than one. Yeah, I think so too. I think we've definitely found some different types of things. I don't think this was one Frankenstein animal. I think it was having a nice healthy meal 
Um, the fact that someone was able to get all of these owl pellets from it tells me that this owl probably couldn't live in the wild and was being taken care of by people, maybe in a sanctuary or a rehab center, and they would take good care of it and make sure he got plenty, he or she got plenty to eat. All right, excellent job, you guys. So let's take any questions that you have. Um, if you have any questions that are not up here on the board, you can put those on, uh, you can put those in the chat and Ms. Marquita will let us know where they are. One question is, are there any apps that you could use to identify, I'm assuming identify birds? Um, one app that I use, again, I don't work for Cornell Lab, but they have some really good research. They've been, their lab has been working on this for decades. There's an, a free app called Merlin. You can put that on your phone. And when you're out, you can check a bird by sight, by sound, by region. Uh, they have the calls that the males, the females, or that both of them make if they're singing back and forth in a duet. So I always like that. Um, so again, that is Merlin. That is a free bird app. We just got a question really quick that I would like to answer before. Um, somebody just asked, what is the biggest owl called and how big is it? Um, the biggest species of owl is called the eagle owl. Um, and its wingspan is probably, I'd say, five feet. It's, it would be like, uh, like a bald eagle. Um, they're not as heavy as bald eagles because um, they're just a lot more fluff than they are actual bones. Um, but they are very large. I actually uh, got to take care of one from a little baby to an adult. And I would say she probably sat, if this is the table down here, um, she was about a foot and a half tall. Um, when she was full grown. So they are very, very large owls. Awesome. All right. So other questions, what else can we do for owl fun? As I mentioned, you can, uh, you can order owl pellets online on, um, on an online source like Amazon. You can look up on uh, Nest Watch. You can find different types of boxes or nests that you can create for owls to try to attract them. Or honestly, if you um, want to stay up late some night and you grab yourself a uh, pair of binoculars and you uh, stay outside long enough to let your eyes adjust to the darkness and start listening. If you hear an owl, maybe see if you can start to spot it. Um, that's always, you know, just having like a fun little camping out night with your family. See if you can spot any creature that comes out at night, really. Um, also, oh, you know what? I have another answer for something else you can do for owl fun. And that is you can make bark balls, owl pellets edible owl pellets it is a no-bake recipe. Um, we have the, the link um, on here. And Ms. Marquita, would you be able to put that link in the chat from the notes section into the chat room? Let if me you try click and do that. And it is, um, so you don't even need to bake them. You just grab all the ingredients. I believe the pretzels are meant to represent the bones, like the leg bone, and smush it all together. Um, there are different recipes out there, so you can look for the owl pellet, edible owl pellet. Um, some of them are covered in chocolate. This one uses coconut. So that is a fun little thing that you guys can do as well. I do like that one. All right, other questions. Uh, how can you tell if an owl is male or female? So for a lot of animals, that comes down to, the, for birds, it might come down to the color pattern on their feathers. It might come down to their size. The males and females might be in different sizes. Ms. Marquita, do you know any other ways that you could tell a male or a female part, especially if you are um, if you're working with them? Yes, uh, owls are not sexually dimorphic, which means the males and females look exactly the same, um, except for a few species like the snowy owl. So the most time that you can figure out if it's a male or female is by the size of it once it's full grown, which just by looking at it in a tree, it's very difficult to do. <laughs> but uh, females tend to be larger than the males. Uh, with bird species. All right, awesome. And can owls eat other animals besides rodents? We did see on the chart that some of the bones belong to birds. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Marquita, there's some owls that will hunt uh, reptiles as well, correct? Owls can hunt anything from fish to amphibians, reptiles, other owls, large animals like deer. Eagle owls can take down small deer. They obviously don't eat it all in one bite, but they will pick in eat the meat slowly that way. And where are eagle owls found? Uh, they're Eurasian eagle owls, so they're from the European areas. Oh my goodness. Or you guys can go on to um, eBird and try and, and type it in and see where you can find them. So you're not going to be attracting eagle owls into your backyard, luckily. You will be fine. No. Were there any other questions in the chat, Ms. Marquita? 
Um, we, I think those were all of the ones. One of them asked um, how often can, or do owls have to eat? And the answer to that is as often as they can. Um, they're just like us, they, they uh, use their bodies to heat themselves, so they have to eat very often. So if they can, they will hunt uh, every day to eat uh, a meal every day if they can. Right, that is awesome. Now I am going to turn off the recording.